Welcome to Why on YouTube. Today, we're diving deep into one of the most fascinating yet elusive topics out there, consciousness. What is it? How do we define it? And why does it matter? We'll also explore a critical challenge known as the hard problem of consciousness. Then, discuss the presence of consciousness in the animal kingdom. Also, what happens to our consciousness when we die? And finally, can we digitize consciousness so we can live forever? So, let's start with the basics. What is consciousness? In simple terms, it's our awareness of ourselves and our surroundings, but that's just scratching the surface. Imagine feeling joy, sadness, pain, or curiosity. Feeling the warmth of the sun on your skin or the sound of rain against the window. These experiences are all tied to consciousness. Neuroscientists have tried for years to map consciousness to specific brain functions. They've identified various states of consciousness, like waking, dreaming, and altered states. But what about the essence of consciousness itself? the subjective experience that makes you, you, and me, me. That's where things get tricky. Imagine a bustling city, that's like your brain, with millions of vehicles, or neurons, zipping around, sending messages through a vast network of roads, the synapses. A single thought or emotion emerges when countless neurons activate together. Just like traffic patterns, how those neurons interact determines the flow of information. Researchers have discovered that when we experience a conscious moment, specific regions of the brain light up, delivering an orchestra of signals that help us interpret the world. For example, the prefrontal cortex, our brain's conductor. This area is crucial for decision-making and self-awareness. Meanwhile, the thalamus acts like a gateway sending sensory information like light, sound, and touch to the appropriate regions. These networks work together to create our conscious perception. Now let's zoom in on the concept of information processing. This refers to how our brain organizes and interprets incoming sensory data. Think about it. Every second, we're bombarded with stimuli. From the ringing of a phone to the warmth of the sun, our brain has to sift through all that noise and highlight what truly matters. Information processing is not just about passive reception, it's dynamic. The brain predicts what's coming next based on prior experiences, allowing us to respond faster. This is why when you see a flying ball, your hand instinctively moves to catch it. Now, here's a mind-boggling fact. Many researchers believe that our brain builds a continuous narrative of consciousness from these processed pieces of information, almost like stitching together a quilt of experiences. But it leaves us with a question. Is conscious experience a mere trick of perception, or is there something deeper going on? Let me toss some thoughts your way. Take a moment to think of a cherished memory, perhaps a family gathering or your last vacation. How does your brain reconstruct that moment? It dives into the recesses of your mind, pulling threads of information like emotions, sights, and sounds, organizing them into a coherent story that you can revisit. That's the magic of information processing at work. Some neuroscientists argue that our perception of reality is not a direct rendition of the world, but rather a best guess created by our brain. It's like wearing rose-colored glasses, affecting how we interpret our experiences. Recent experiments in neuroscience have explored this phenomenon, utilizing advanced brain imaging techniques to uncover the hidden layers of consciousness. Researchers can track which neurons are active during specific conscious experiences, peeling back the layers of how we process not just information, but our very existence. Still, consciousness is an ongoing exploration. 
The interplay between information processing and our conscious experience continues to evolve, revealing astonishing insights into who we are and what it means to be human. The term hard problem of consciousness was coined by philosopher David Chalmers in 1995, and it distinguishes between what he calls the easy problems and the hard problem. Chalmers argues that while we can study the brain, observe its processes, and even model how it functions, we still cannot fully explain why and how these physical processes give rise to our subjective experiences. Easy problems are those we can tackle scientifically, like understanding how the brain processes information or how we respond to stimuli. These are challenging, no doubt, but they seem solvable. The hard problem, however, grapples with the fundamental question, why and how do we have these rich, subjective experiences? Why does it feel like something to be us? Let's illustrate this with an example. Imagine a sophisticated AI capable of responding to questions just like you or me. It can recognize patterns, learn and recall memories, but does it feel? Does it grapple with boredom or joy? This is where the hard problem shines a spotlight on a crucial difference. Our consciousness is tied to our biology, experiences, and even a touch of mystery. Some argue that consciousness is an illusion. Others suggest it might even be a fundamental aspect of the universe. So what does all this mean for you, your life, and our understanding of the universe? The quest to unravel the hard problem of consciousness might shape the future of philosophy, psychology, and even artificial intelligence. It forces us to confront our nature, our existence, and the very essence of who we are. And while the answers may elude us for now, perhaps the journey of exploring these questions is what truly matters. The gap between physical matter and subjective experience is what makes consciousness such a profound mystery. When it comes to animals, the concept of consciousness can get really complex. So how do we measure consciousness in creatures who can't speak out their thoughts? Research suggests that many animals exhibit signs of consciousness. Take dolphins, for example. Did you know they have names for each other? Just like us, they use unique whistles to identify friends. Elephants are known for their impressive memory and display emotions like grief. They can recognize the bones of deceased companions and react with incredible empathy, something we often associate with human emotions. And crows? They're not just clever, they're incredibly self-aware. These feathered geniuses can solve puzzles, use tools, and even recognize human faces. Some have been seen holding grudges against people who mistreat them. Now let's talk about the mirror test a classic method for gauging self-awareness. Animals like great apes, elephants, and even some parrots have passed this test, recognizing their reflection and demonstrating self-recognition. But here's a twist. Many animals might not respond to mirrors because they simply don't interact with reflective surfaces in their natural habitat. While many species showcase basic consciousness, others exhibit advanced cognition, Take orcas, for example. They are social hunters, using intricate techniques to capture prey, which indicates complex planning and communication. Even our beloved pets, like dogs, have shown significant understanding of human emotions. Studies reveal they can respond to human cues and even understand human language to a surprising degree. It's like they've got a third sense. So what does all this mean for us? Understanding animal consciousness helps us nurture and protect our planet. When we recognize that animals possess complex emotional lives, we can create more empathetic practices toward their conservation 
and well-being. So next time you see an animal, remember, there may be an entire world of thoughts and feelings behind those eyes. What happens with consciousness when we die? When we talk about consciousness, we're referring to that elusive part of ourselves that allows us to think, feel, and experience life. But when we begin to explore what happens to our consciousness after we die, we're stepping into a realm filled with science, spirituality, and personal beliefs. Different cultures view consciousness after death. Traditional beliefs range from reincarnation in Hinduism and Buddhism to the Christian idea of heaven and hell and the Native American perspective of returning to the earth. Each of these perspectives offers a unique insight into the nature of consciousness and its continuation. Isn't it amazing how the human spirit wants to believe that there's more after this life? But what about science? Researchers in fields like neuroscience and psychology are also trying to understand consciousness in the context of dying. Multiple studies have been conducted on near-death experiences, these intriguing reports of people who have been revived after clinical death. A common thread in these experiences includes sensations of peace, seeing bright lights, and even encountering loved ones. So, is this proof that consciousness continues beyond death or just a trick of the brain? Scientifically, some theories suggest that in the moments leading to death, our brains may release a surge of neurotransmitters such as DMT or dimethyltryptamine. This could potentially explain those euphoric feelings and vivid experiences. Fascinating, right? But here's where it gets mind-bending, because not all scientists are on the same page. There's still a significant debate regarding whether consciousness is merely a byproduct of brain activity or something more profound, a separate entity altogether. Imagine what life would be like knowing that our consciousness could persist beyond death. How would that change the way we live today? Would we approach our relationships differently? Would we fear death less? Over the last few decades, pioneers in neuroscience, computer science, and even philosophy have combined their expertise to tackle one of the biggest mysteries. Can we digitize consciousness? Researchers like Dr. Miguel Nicolelis have been exploring the idea of brain-machine interfaces. They achieved some insane breakthroughs, like allowing monkeys to control robotic arms with their minds. Imagine this technology applied to preserving our thoughts and memories. So here's where the science gets really fascinating. Scientists have developed sophisticated models to map brain activity, creating what they call the connectome, a complete map of neural connections in the brain. If we can decode this map, it may be possible to simulate consciousness. But we're not there yet, and that's one of the key challenges scientists face. How do you capture the essence of a mind before it fades? Let's talk about some experimental approaches. One method being explored is called whole brain emulation. This process involves scanning the entire brain to create a detailed 3D model, then simulating it on a computer. Some researchers believe this could preserve our thoughts and feelings indefinitely. It sounds like science fiction, doesn't it? There are ethical dilemmas, though. If we could transfer consciousness, would we still be us? What if a copy of your mind was made but the original still remained? Would that experience be the same? Philosophers have long debated the essence of identity, and these questions become even more urgent when we consider life, death, and everything in between. And we can't forget the implications for end-of-life care. If consciousness transfer became possible, it could revolutionize how we approach dying. 
This isn't just about immortality. It's about quality of life. Patients facing terminal illness might have the chance to live on in a digital format, experiencing a sort of virtual existence. And while we're on the cutting edge, it's essential to recognize that we're still exploring these daunting concepts. Researchers worldwide are just beginning to scratch the surface of what consciousness really is and how it can be transferred or preserved. So, where does that leave us? The idea of transferring our consciousness before we die remains more a philosophical inquiry than a scientific one, but the conversation is evolving. Who knows, perhaps in the near future, we may unlock the secrets to consciousness and give new meaning to what it is to exist. What do you think? Would you want to transfer your consciousness and live forever? Thank you for joining us in yet another exploration into the unknown, consciousness. And with scientific advancements today and into the future, are we able to digitize our consciousness and live forever? If you enjoyed this journey with us, please don't forget to like and share the video, leave comments down below, and subscribe to the channel. And remember to keep asking why on YouTube.